Hello, my YouTube friends. Thanks for joining in tonight. Man, if you haven't hit that subscribe button, please hit the subscribe button and slam that bell. Man, we got a lot of great things going on. Feels good to be here tonight, man, and hang out with you guys as always. How was your day? Man, <laughs> I got to laugh about it, man, because uh, today was so much better than yesterday for me. Uh, yesterday was truly one of those days you can call a Monday. <sighs> man, I felt like I was babysitting adults all day long. You know, whenever you ask somebody to do their job and it's like you have to explain it. And then like, what's the problem with communication this morning? <laughs> did, did, is there is there a communication problem today? <laughs> anyway, it feels good to be here on uh, tonight, man. We're going to be talking about some cool stuff. Fire it up. Yeah, man. F go ahead and fire it up and create dynamics in your mixes. Study hit songs. Right. And what is a reference mix? You might be asking yourself, what the heck is he talking about with all these different topics and whatnot? But uh, I, I got to tell you, man, they're all imperative as to creating a good mix. And uh, I just want to just talk about a few of those little topics tonight. Okay, let's start with the end. What is a good reference? I mean, what is a reference mix? A reference mix typically is a mix of another song that you want to try to get your song as close as you can to it. So there's a lot of a lot of good things about having a reference mix. And then if you're just thinking about getting your mix as closest to this reference as possible, you could be going about it the wrong way. And I say this because uh, whenever you're listening, going back and forth to your reference mix, if you're trying to get it as bright as this reference mix or you're trying to do this or that, a lot of times you can actually sabotage your own mix in doing so. Man, let's let's go ahead and jack that one out of the park. And I say that because um, that's typically what your mastering engineer does. He kind of cleans things up, puts the little smiley faces on the EQs, brings those levels up to that zero dB so that it's as loud as whatever songs that that genre is in because all different genres have a different loudness effect to them and if you're trying to match that in your um in your songs you're going to be you're going to be striking out every time and you're going to be very 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 disappointed so whenever i put a reference mix up i typically just it's just a song in that genre that i want to see what elements in that song are the driving force in that song? Is it guitars up front just slamming in your face with mid-range? Is it the drums? Is it the bass bass guitar? And that's what um, that's what we engineers really want to help you guys out with and focus on so much. Not so much in trying to uh, make it sound like the master that's already out there, that's already been mastered. Uh, but make just find those elements in that song that make it a good song, that, um, you know, uh, draw, the driving force of that song. And so when we do that, we can be, uh, we can be assured that we can get our mixes a lot closer to what we want to do as far as um, creating a good mix. And so uh, just it's OK to use that mix as a reference. I'm not steering you away from that. I just want you to listen to that mix in a different kind of way whenever you put it up into on another track and you're a being back and forth. Just actually listen to where the instruments are placed in the mix and uh, how much uh, is it dry? Is the drums dry? Is the vocals dry? Is the guitars dry is or is it wet? Listen to these little things that you can actually um, go by and get and create a, gr a greater mix as far as getting close to that reference. And as far as the levels and all that other stuff goes and how bright things are as far as the whole mix, go ahead and let your um, mastering engineer take care of that. And uh, it might be something that you might want to send him a reference mix and say, hey, 
I got the song. I finished the song out. I feel like I, um, I, you know, I've got the bass up in the mix enough. I feel like the drums are where they need to be. I feel like, you know, the vocals are where they're at as far as how much um, delay and whatever I got on the mix. And I feel like I got pretty close to this um, mix. What can you do for me to actually add a little color, a little warmth, a little body to it, a little uh, EQ and whatnot? Can you get it? Can you get it close to this? So I hope that helps you guys out, man. And as far as studying a hit song, go ahead and listen to those hit songs that are out there because they're there for a reason. And what are these guys doing that we're not doing is the question that we all have to ask ourselves because um, if you don't have a hit song out there, it might be something that uh, we all need to study a little more and find out what is it about the songs that's actually... Um, you know, making it to the radio, and what is it about this tune that sounds really good, that's intriguing to me to want to listen to it all the way through. Sometimes we can get people in, and we can mix their stuff out, or we can actually mix our own stuff out, and we're not really paying attention to, you know, it's ours, and so it's our baby, and we, you know, we want to, um, you know, we'll get our friends to like it and things like that, but is it good enough to actually be on the radio and is it good enough to actually um, be a hit song so these are elements we really need to study as engineers as songwriters as uh, music producers in the whole nine yards we really need to study what is it about these songs that's actually making it to the radio and people really really like them a lot of it has to do with song structure how long is the song is the song three minutes is it three minutes and 30 seconds is it a radio airplay song? In other words, is it going to be three minutes and 30 seconds and under? If the song's too long, it might not make it to the radio. And even if it was good enough, it's too long. And so uh, I know there's been many cases before where um, other people, big time artists from The Doors to Zeppelin and everybody else, um, you know, that was a factor. That was a key factor as their producer. Is it going to make radio play because the song's over four minutes? And I think of some of those Zeppelin tunes that actually made it on the radio that's over three minutes and 30 seconds. That They kind of broke the rules. Hooray, Led Zeppelin, for doing so because we get to listen to A Stairway to Heaven and the song remains the same and all those songs, Moby Dick, that are over three minutes long. And so... Um, but I'm just talking about uh, hits today that are typically around the 330 mark. And if you study song structure, which most artists should know um, how many verses, you know, when the chorus or pre-chorus comes in and then, you know, another verse and then another um, pre-chorus chorus and then bridge and then maybe chorus out and tag. So um, learning these different st song structures I help you nail nail that three minute and 30 seconds every time doesn't matter um what the song is saying as long as you do follow the structure you're going to end your songs at three minutes and 30 seconds or a little or three minutes you know so um study these hits man because i guarantee you, uh and tempo tempo of the song makes a world of differences also knowing having a good tempo to your song is it going to be um makes a big difference i know there's been plenty of times i've actually tracked a song and it felt really good at 120 or it felt really good at 110 beats per minute and then after i tracked the song and listened back to it, it's like man i just really feel like this song needs to be a little faster and so uh typically it's always a little faster for me i don't know if you guys uh, run into that situation as well but I always feel like the song needs to be uh, moving along and trucking along. And so um, there's been times I've actually taken a whole song uh, after tracking at 110 and actually move it up, you know, uh, 10 more beats per minute. And it just felt right. The whole song just felt right. It moved along. Even when the guitar came in, uh, it just felt everything felt right about the song. And so that's why it's really important for us to study these hit songs. And um, if we're actually doing our own music or we have another band come in and they have a song that um, 
whatever type of genre they're playing, whether it's, you know, heavy or, or whatever song it is, it might be a good idea to have a reference song that's pretty comparable to it. And then, um, see if the guys can actually play it at that tempo. You know, they might be, um, they might be, um, you know, a little slow or a little dragging. And so I ask them, Hey, you know, get a click track going, see if they can play that click tracks, you know, at, um, maybe five more beats, um, per minute or whatever. And so, uh, a lot of times, uh, it'll change the whole, uh, vibe of the tune by the tempo of the song. So it's, that's another critical thing that, most of us, uh, a lot of us don't know. And so, um, yeah, you got to get those tempos right, man. They're, they're, um, they're there for a reason and, uh, you'll be surprised how much, how much better your song might sound at a little faster tempo or a little slower tempo, uh, de- depending on what genre it is and what style of music it is. And, uh, is it a ballad song or is it a rock song? And so, um, it's always a good thing to study that and to um, get as close as you can to those tempos because that plays a large role as to the vibe and how the vibe feels on the tune. Can you imagine, uh, for instance, let's just say you're listening to um, a heavy song, a thrash song, and everybody's just into it. <clears throat> but it's turned down that tempo really slow. It's going to change <laughs> It's going to change everything about the vibe of that song and how it feels and how it comes across and whether it makes you just want to go and, and you know, with this energy or you just sit back and go, dude, and, you know, you need to speed it up. So tempo is a big factor. Study those hit songs. Um, get your reference, but don't try to actually get your, your mix. Um, you know, don't get worried about if it isn't if it doesn't shine as much or if it isn't as loud and all those other little things, man. Just concentrate on what propels that song. What is up front in the mix? Is it dry? Is it wet? And concentrate on those things. Where the instruments are placed in the mix? Are they hard left, hard right? Somewhere in between, in the middle, up and down. Where do the guitars come in? Where do the cymbals sound like they're at in the song? Pay attention to those things because that's going to help you be a better listener and a better engineer and create better music whenever you're actually mixing these things out. So I found a link last night uh, on uh, Music in Motion. I'm not sure if it's the same album that I actually had. But I am going to put a link down there below what I found on YouTube. And I want you guys to listen to this. And he has more than one song out on um, this guy that I'm talking about. I can't think of his name. But I am going to put a link down there for you guys to click on that link. And go check out his songs. And I want you to listen. Put on some good set of headphones. Okay, you don't need to be listening to this through your iPhone. You have to have a good set of headphones on or a good set of stereo uh, speakers or monitors in your room. And I want you to pay attention to, to where things are in the song and how they're moving around constantly in the song. And you will be amazed how much your ear just keys into the slightest little things where things pop in in the mix, whether they're high or middle or low. And trust me, when you click on this link below, you're going to be hearing all kind of things moving in and out, where the cymbals hit, where the kick drum hits down low, where the snare hits, and um, yeah. So anyway, I'm going to put that link down below. Y'all check it out. It's going to help you. I want you to study this guy's mixes on his tunes because um, he just does it with instruments. I haven't heard anything with vocals in it yet. But I just want you to pay attention really, really close to how everything is shifting in the mix and the stereo field and where things are coming in and where they're placed and the depth of it, the dryness of it, the height and all that in that three dimensional. And that's what we want to try to do to create a better mix for ourselves and give space and room and things to breathe coming in and out. Man, I had to get that out. I hope I got that out. I was able to convey that as best I could to you guys, man. Um, 
But yeah, work on your mixes, study what the pros are doing, study those hit songs, always use a reference. Um, go ahead and fire it up, man. Go ahead and fire all your gear up and get behind the wheel and start mixing some of those tunes out. Uh, and I think you're going to find that you're actually going to do some really, really good work when you start giving, uh, spreading things out and uh, placing different instruments in different places and using your automation all the time. Just get in there and start using your automation. Don't be afraid. It's not a big deal. Uh, it's not going to change the world. And so you can do it. And this is going to give you time to actually get better at automation and actually create music in motion. And uh, I think whenever you start to create music in motion, it's going to create um, dynamics. It's going to create intensity. And the listener is going to be there all the time wondering what the heck is going to happen next. Because uh, the, human, the human ears is really, really sensitive, uh, even more than you think so. And we can hear things that are, if it doesn't sound right or something drops completely out, our ears can identify that. Sometimes if it's with the voice that drops out or we might lose that first word or something, it's very distracting and can lose our attention. And that's all it takes to lose our attention on something. And then we're on to diff another th different things. So it's very, very important. That's why they say that a listener, a lot of times when they're listening to a song, you've only got about, I want to say, between 15 to 20 seconds to catch that, maybe even less than that, to catch that listener's attention to whether he's going to either change the station or keep it there. And so you don't have that long to actually hook them in and grab them and that's why a lot of times uh, you see these songs even start out in the chorus section without a verse. They'll start right into the chorus, and then they'll go into a verse. Or if they have a verse, it's a really, really short uh, verse, and then they jump right into the chorus. And so you want to give it to them really quick. You want to that, set that hook, go ahead and hook them into the song, and then it's about keeping them there. So... Keep those dynamics. Don't overcompress. Let's get out of that overcompression thing. I know we went through, uh, many engineers went through a stage of using compressors and smashing everything so hard to get things so loud um, that it actually just smeared the dynamics of the song. And honestly, they just kind of really suck, to be uh, truthful with you. But if you listen to really good songs with dynamics, there's volumes, there's things coming in, there's things moving around in the mix, there's things coming in and out. And I love those Led Zeppelin songs that Eddie Kramer mixed simply because he is a master engineer. He not only is a mastering engineer, um, one of the best, but he actually mixed some of the best musicians in his time, and that is Led Zeppelin. And uh, if you listen to his mixes, man, things are coming in this way. Things are coming in, pulling back, going in, delays, feathering back after the vocal. Let's not go, hey, and then, you know, it just, hey, hey, and just, you know, really, really cool mixes. Um, pay attention to those songs, man. I start applying some of those effects and things that the mass, the, some of the greatest did. And I think you're going to find yourself getting better at your mix and actually creating better um, better everything. There's going to be um, more interest is what I'm trying to say. Uh, even if you pull the vocalist out, let's just say you pull the vocals out and then um, and you actually did your mix with uh, the instruments and the placements. And then you created this really interesting mix with just instruments coming in and out. I think you're going to find it a lot easier to go ahead after the fact and then uh, find out where the vocals need to sit in the mix and how to glue it all together to create a beautiful mix to where everything is rock solid, glued together, hitting in the face, moving around, drawing interest, keeping the, keeping the listener to that song and want to hear the song on the way through. These are great little tips I hope you guys can um, adhere and use in your 
repertoire as to actually being a better engineer as far as mixing and listening. I think this is going to take you a long ways and you're going to be really, really surprised how fast your mixing skills become once you start listening to these hits, using dynamics in your song, creating movement in the mix, having things come pan hard left and right and shifting and moving around, giving all your instruments space to breathe in and out to where it isn't just static all the way across. And so when we can get to where we're listening to our tunes or our references and we can actually put things and move things in and out of the mix, it's going to keep the listeners here to, to the mix longer and we're going to hook them and we're going to have them and we're going to create a great mix and a great song by doing so. Man, I hope this helps you guys out, man. I know it helped me out once I started really paying attention to my mix, started using automation all the way through my mix, whether it's automating effects coming in and out, automating compression in and out. Don't keep it static. Keep things moving. Keep compressors doing different things. Also, um, this is going to help you get better really, really quick. So, uh Study what those artists are doing. Study what those hit songs, what propels the song and that. And don't get so caught up because it's easy to do. I know I did for many, many years. I'd have a reference song and I'd get just downright pissed because I would sit there for hours and come back and back and back and back and forth. And I never really could get my song to sound like the reference or even close. And it was because I was trying to get it to sound like it. Don't do that. Just listen for those things that actually propel the song. Where the bass sits in the song. Is the vocals dry? Where the instruments are placed? Pay attention to those things. Then let, the, let the mastering engineer make those smiley faces and curves on the EQ and all that other stuff to bring those levels up to zero dB. Typically, I like to leave, uh, I like to actually send my stuff out about minus 6 dB. And that way, that gives the mastering energy engineer plenty of room to bring those levels up. And I don't have to, man. If I can get my mix sounding really, really good and it sounds clear, things are moving around and I'm satisfied with it at minus 6 dB, I know that when I send it in to, you know, a true mastering engineer, he's going to be able to bring up those levels where they need to be the loudness that it needs to be for that genre and uh, EQ and everything so that it's going to actually sound good on every type of uh, speakers that I put it through. And uh, so I'll leave that up to the mastering engineer. So for you guys uh, to have a reference, what I'm typically talking about is just use that reference and that genre as to where the instruments are placed in the song, where they're moving around, how much reverb's in it, how dry is the vocals? Where is the vocal set? Is it back? Pay attention to these things more so than actually trying to get your song to sound like what is already um, on the radio. So that'll help you out a lot and you won't get discouraged. And uh, you'll find yourself mixing a lot faster and creating some really, really good stuff by doing so. I know uh, it took me a while to figure that out. And um, I wished I would have figured it out months and years before because it would have saved me a lot of frustration. And uh, you guys are probably, some of you guys that are just starting out and using references, if you're trying to hit hit the ball out of the park and get your stuff close to that as far as um, how bright things sound or how low or the mid-range and all, don't worry so much about that, man. Just worry about or just concentrate on where things are in the mix and what the driving force is. And you will be so happy and your mixes will too, man. So uh, send those mixes off, leave a little bit of headroom in there. Don't try to get, don't smash everything. Don't, um, don't try to get everything as loud as you can on your personal mix. If you plan on sending it off to a mastering engineer, simply because it's going to be his work that actually brings it up to where it needs to be. Everybody's going to be happy and it's going to be a winner, man. You're, you're gonna, like I say, you're going to find yourself mixing a lot better than you ever thought you ever could mix and actually producing some really cool stuff, man. 
it feels good to be on here tonight, man. I don't know about you guys, man, but uh, it's been a hard day today. Um, I got in and was contemplating on a few things what I wanted to talk about tonight. And I found myself really wanting to talk about the reference mix more than anything because I know a lot of people get all uh, hooked up into trying to make their stuff sound like what they're listening to. And they get so frustrated when they find that they actually can't get... um, their mix even close and when they start bringing up low end or actually start more add more high end on the bus on the master bus it can really uh damage everything and uh you know not be very good and you're going to be very upset so uh i wanted to talk about that tonight man uh more than anything but uh we got some really cool stuff happening i am actually uh, I want to say Thursday, either Thursday or Friday, if I can actually get by. I'm actually going to go to uh, one of the local t-shirt shops and see if um, if um, I can go in there and sit down with somebody and talk about different um, t-shirts and designs for the Audio Master t-shirt. Hey, Ruby. And so, um, yeah, I want to, um, I don't know if you guys know this, but uh, on my previous um video last night you know I, I was actually wearing my audio master t-shirt and uh, and was talking about how i did that online and uh when i got the shirts back man they were just the audio master was too low on the, on the shirt on the chest and uh i mean it's okay man but it's not something that i really want to um get out there and have people wear and be proud of that other people have an audio master t-shirt And so uh, we have summer coming on, and I'm going to sit down. I'm going to have white shirts with a a light gray. I want to say, let's see if I can find a gray that the letter is going to be in. I don't know, just just like a light gray color. They're not going to be dark. They're going to be more light gray. That way, when the sun hits those letters, you're not going to fry in the summer heat. I know here in Texas, man, it gets really, really hot. Southeast Texas, um is um uh, it gets uh really steaming hot because we're close to the coast and so uh, it can be stifling at times and um if you're not well hydrated and everything you will pass out and so um i feel like this summer is going to be a really really hot summer typically because um you know we've had a, a winter a winter freeze a storm that came in through so late so i feel like that uh we are actually going to be in the in the 90s the majority of the summer and uh and whenever we got our audio master t-shirts on man we don't want to pass that out there so i'm doing black ones for the winter for those of you who love black t-shirts i do in the winter but in the summertime in the spring i do not wear black in texas just simply because it's so hot so gotta have a white t-shirt with gray lettering so that you guys can get out there in the heat and um not pass out man but uh so many neat things to talk about in the audio recording world and uh i always try to get on here and encourage you guys if you haven't been in your studio go ahead and fire it up man crank everything up turn everything on um, get your gear running start smelling those tubes cooking and some of your mic preamps and some of your other preamps that's hanging around and start laying down some tracks and get motivated in your studio to actually um start producing some good stuff, man. <sighs> I know there's a lot of good stuff that we can all be working on right now. And sometimes it seems like right when we're getting ahead or when we're into the vi- uh, into the groove of things, something will come along or something will happen in life that want to pull the rug out from underneath us and uh stop our um progress in our um in our studio and so um i want to encourage you guys if you have a recording studio man go ahead and get in there and fire everything up get out your guitar start laying down some tracks start writing some songs and um if you're not a songwriter have someone that comes over or a friend of yours that you know having come over invite him over with his acoustic guitar or whatever instrument he plays and uh and have him you know just sit down and spend some time with him and uh have him lay down some different tracks man put down a click track for him and have him play to that click track 
and then um, have him do some vocal tracks or whatever he can do. And just start playing around with your mixes. Start using your automation every day. Start automating things. Start with, um, start with, uh, you know, just with delays and things like that. That's an easy way to start with your automation. You can uh, have delays come in and out in different parts of the song. And uh, typically, generally, what um, a lot of engineers do and what I've heard on many, 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 many countless albums is as the song graduates and as the song goes through its build, they call that a build, uh, typically more instruments come into play throughout the song. And as the song progresses, so do the amount of effects on the vocals and other things. So uh, that might be something you might want to work on as to when the effects come in more so as the song builds and progresses throughout. So keep adding interest. Keep adding something new to the mix. Some people call that ear candy or whatever. And just keep adding other elements to the mix as the song builds up to where toward the end. All you want to do, all the listener wants to do is to hear more and play it again. To hear more and play it again because it's so interesting. Things are moving around. Things are coming in the mix. Adding new elements. These are things that we all can work on to be a better engineer and a better producer. And so uh, I wanted to share that with you guys tonight. I wanted to share a little bit of some of those tips that you can work on and enjoy the whole way through. And don't get discouraged because your song doesn't sound like the reference that you actually put it up against. All it's really there for is for to see what the driving element is in that song, where it's placed in the song, and, um, and where everything else sits, you know, and kind of moves around when delays come in and all that other stuff. Those are what you really want to pay attention to, man. And then once you can start identifying that and start... Um, as to uh, knowing when the chorus is going to come in and knowing when the pre-chorus is coming in, and knowing when these different elements are going to come in for the build, it's going to help you be a better producer and a better engineer at the same time. And so that's really what you want to do. You want to be able to be a better producer and a better engineer. That way, if you have other artists in, you can help them out. You can say, hey, you know, what about a bridge here, man? Y'all got a bridge? You thought about a two-line bridge, or you thought about a four-line or a sixteen-measure bridge, something like that. And then when you do that, um, it's going to help you all the way around to be a more, a more, um, I don't know, I don't know the word I'm looking for. Just, just have your stuff together to where it's going to help other people as well. And so uh, that's a good thing, man. It's a good thing. It's only going to help you become. Uh, better at everything by the more you know about um, song structure and about um, about when things come in and out of the mix to create a better mix. That was hard getting out, man, for some reason. But anyway, I hope this helped you out tonight, man. As always, here at Audio Master, our trip studios, we appreciate each and every one of you, man. We appreciate all of you and all uh, of your comments. So keep your comments coming in. I've been getting a lot of private message comments, and I appreciate that. Uh, feel free to go ahead and type down there, too, some of your comments, man, That because that's going to draw other people to uh, feel more open and put their comments down there in the comments below. But I've been getting a lot of private message comments, which is really cool. I don't mind that. And, you know, uh, I always get back to you as soon as I see those comments. So um, I like them, man. I like every, I like all those comments. And there, I don't think I've ever not responded to uh, any of you guys, um, you know, dropping in and letting your, putting your comments down there. I always respond to each and every one of you, typically because you're all important to me. And if you can learn one good thing out of all my mixes, out of all my posts, if you can learn one good thing and it really, really helps you out, then I've done my job. And so uh, I feel good about that. And I feel like you guys are going to learn something on my channel. And so uh, just put it into practice. 
because you can know about things, but if you don't put it into practice, then you either forget about it or you just don't use it in your repertoire. So what we want to try to do is get you to using those uh, ideas and techniques in your repertoire to where it becomes an everyday thing, just like brushing your teeth, man. You get up, you brush your teeth, and you do your job, man. And so we want to get you in that repertoire of uh, these different techniques and how to apply them in your mix. And uh, you're just going to be a better engineer and um, all the way around. And it's going to show in your songs. It's going to show in your mixes. And uh, you're going to love it, man. So thank you guys for joining in tonight. I can't tell you enough. It's great to have you here. It's great to, um, that you're with me. And uh, hit that subscribe button, man. Also hit that like button and share. And uh, we appreciate it here at Audio Master Studio. And also I want to tell you, man, it won't be long. I'm going to have an Audio Master t-shirt out. And um, I'm going to be giving them away, 10, of, 10 away. And then I'm not sure what... Um, what um, Bull Tide actually wants to do with the other 10. But if we see that we're moving a lot of these and we're getting these out, um, everybody needs to have an Audio Master t-shirt, man, because they're going to be smoking hot. They're going to be cool, man. And so I'm thinking about some type of tube-type old gear on the back and then uh, Audio Master on the front. And uh, it's going to be cool, man. I'm actually going to design these shirts up night, have, have some professionals do it. And it's going to go a long ways, man. Uh, everybody's going to want an Audio Master T-shirt, man. If you love audio and you love audio recording, you got to have an Audio Master T-shirt. And so uh, we thank you so much for joining in tonight. As always, we will see you tomorrow.